Obama typically has employed surrogates to make blunt racial appeals. Recall Vice President Joe Biden telling a mostly black audience on the 2012 campaign trail that Republicans want to put y'all back in chains. But the nation's first black president is not above personally using this sort of rhetoric, as he has sometimes done in response to the relatively few black critics of his presidency who have dared to go public. During Obama's first term, Democratic Representative Emanuel Cleaver of Missouri told the Wall Street Journal that he was frustrated with the president over the stratospheric black unemployment rate. The congressman said that he understood Obama's reluctance to be too closely associated with the black community and thus be seen as favoring blacks over other Americans. Nevertheless, you would think that if any group in America had 20% to 25% unemployment, it would generate all kinds of attention, he said. The Labor Department would understandably and necessarily begin to concentrate on what can we do to reduce this level of unemployment. Congress would give great time on the floor for debate on what can be done. After other prominent black liberals, including academic Cornell West, commentators Tavis Smiley, and Democratic Representative Maxine Waters of California, began griping about Obama's lack of attention to the economic problems of the black underclass, the president responded in a sharply worded address to the Congressional Black Caucus. I expect all of you to march with me and press on, he said, evoking the language of Martin Luther King Jr. and other black preachers of the civil rights era. Take off your bedroom slippers, put on your marching shoes. Shake it off. Stop complaining, stop grumbling, stop crying. We are going to press on. But racial allegiance doesn't entirely explain black attitudes toward Obama, according to David Besides a political scientist at the Joint Center for Political and Economic Studies who specializes in black issues, you have to put the choice that African Americans are making in context, he told the Huffington Post in 2011. Certainly there may be some residual good feelings from that historic moment in 2008. But support for the president remains strong because there is no real menu of political options for African Americans. Besides is a liberal who holds conservatives in low regard, but he is correct in noting that GOP outreach to blacks in recent decades has ranged somewhere between inadequate and non-existent. In the main, black voters don't choose between Democratic and Republican candidates. They vote Democrat or they stay home. Many liberals are quick to assume that racial animus explains the lack of any serious GOP effort to woo blacks, but in his memoir, Supreme Court Justice Clarence Thomas offered an alternative explanation, political pragmatism. Recounting his days as head of the Equal Employment Opportunity Commission under President Reagan in the early 1980s, Thomas wrote that his main quarrel with the Reagan administration was that he thought it needed a positive civil rights agenda instead of merely railing against racial preferences but I found it impossible to get the administration to pay attention to such matters, he wrote. Too many of the president's political appointees seemed more interested in playing to the conservative bleachers, and I'd come to realize, as I told a reporter, that conservatives don't exactly break their necks to tell blacks that they're welcome. Thomas next offered a theory as to why that was the case. Was it because they were prejudiced? Perhaps some of them were, but the real reason, I suspected, was that blacks didn't vote for Republicans. Nor would Democrats work with President Reagan on civil rights issues. As a result, there was little interest within the administration in helping a constituency that wouldn't do anything in return to help the president. My suspicions were confirmed when I offered my assistance to President Reagan's re-election campaign, only to be met with near-total indifference. One political consultant was honest enough to tell me straight out that since the president's re-election strategy didn't include the black vote, there was no role for me. Prior to Obama's win,